Welcome back, everybody. We continue our, our road towards the monotone convergence theorem. Uh, this video, we're going to show sort of the reverse direction of the previous video. Uh, before, we were looking at increasing bounded from above sequences, and now we're going to be looking at decreasing bounded from below sequences. And we're going to show that they are uh, going to converge to their infimum, right, which we'll denote by little b here. So I'll quickly recall uh, the definitions of these things. So uh, first, decreasing. Uh, so from the last video where we did increasing, uh, I made this comment about how uh, it really should be non-decreasing. And well, the same thing applies here for decreasing. This should be non-increasing. Uh, but again, uh, in the books, they're often using the word decreasing to mean non-decreasing and then uh, strictly decreasing to mean what I would call decreasing. Uh, so let's see. Let's just write down the definition. So A is decreasing. So this is a sequence A. It's decreasing if... m is less than n implies that a sub m is greater than or equal to a sub n. So these are indexing right terms in the sequence. This says if I go out further, so n is bigger than m, I go out further in the sequence, I'm getting things which are, well, we want to say smaller, but we really need to say are no bigger than the previous terms, right? So the sequence should be going down, roughly speaking, where we, we do allow equality between terms. All right, next we have bounded from below. So if I uh, if I have a bunch of dots, all right, these represent the terms in my sequence, right? I, in some cases, can draw a line, and the dots don't go below that line. And if that's the case, then we're going to say that the A is bounded from below. All right. Last time we drew the line above. All right. And if we could do that, then we said the A was bounded from above. So A is bounded from below if there exists some little b such that a sub n is less than, or rather greater than or equal to b for all n. All right, so if you know that your, your sequence is always at least as big as b, I mean, it could equal, right? This is okay, right? We're allowed to do that. We just can't, whoops, we just can't go below it. All right, uh, the third thing here is this word infimum. All right, so infimum which is, again, sort of this dual notion to uh, the supremum. So last time we talked about amongst all of the upper bounds, you could find the least one, and that was called the supremum. The infimum is going to be for lower bounds, right? So you, you look at all of the bounds from below, and you find the greatest one. Right? Oh, and I, I guess I should point out here, as I did in the previous video, right? In such a case, right, we call little b a lower bound. All right, so when we were bounded from above, we had upper bounds. When we're bounded from below, we have lower bounds. All right, and so um, B is called the infimum, All right? Well, it's called the infimum if B is a least, uh, I'm sorry, least, we're doing, we're still doing supremum in my brain, aren't we, is a greatest lower bound. Oops, get green in here. Technical difficulties is a greatest lower bound for A. Okay, and uh, denoted by INF of A. Okay, so that would be the infimum. And so the claim in this problem is that if you know that your sequence is decreasing, 
right? So here you can see it's kind of going up and down a little bit, but if it's truly decreasing, and if it is bounded from below, then you find the greatest lower bound, right? So the biggest of all the lower bounds, and that is what actually A will converge to. Okay, and the proof will be uh, almost identical to the previous uh, video's proof. So we'll we'll draw a picture. So I have my B, and I'm going to draw a little epsilon band. All right, so it's going to go up to B plus epsilon now. All right. And the claim is that at some point, the sequence A has to go into this band, right? Well, what if it didn't go into this band? Well, we know it can't go below B because B is a greatest lower bound, right? It's a lower bound, so A can't go below it, all right? So A must be above it somewhere up here. And if it never went in, right, so if it stayed like this, right, and I draw it decreasing because it is decreasing, well, in this case, B plus epsilon might be our infimum, but it certainly wouldn't be B, right? We could certainly find, if, if this was what the, the, the sequence looked like, we'd be able to find a greater lower bound than B, right? B plus epsilon would do the trick. So uh, since uh, B is the least upper bound, ah, we're still doing it, is the greatest lower bound. So the greatest lower bound. There exists some m such that a sub m lies above b, maybe equal to it, but less than b plus epsilon. So at some point, we actually have to go in here. There's some a sub m which is going to be inside that band. All right. However, we also know that a is decreasing. So it's not going to leave again through the top. All right. So it's got to be going down. But we also know that it's bounded from below by b, which means it can't leave through the bottom. So it is going to have to live inside these bands right, forever. All right, so since, and since uh, A is decreasing and bounded from below by B, we have that B is less than or equal to A sub N is less than B plus epsilon for all n once you get past m. All right. Okay, and that's essentially the, the proof right there. Now let's write it up formally. So uh, in order to show this convergence, right, we want to write down our eventually function. So we define um, n from our domain of closeness to our codomain of eventually. And where is it going to send some epsilon? It'll send it to the smallest integer m, such that a sub m is at least b, but less than b plus epsilon. OK, so this clearly depends on epsilon. Right? And so now, if epsilon is greater than 0, and little n is greater than n of epsilon, then we know that all of the terms, right, after a sub m are going to lie between b and b plus epsilon, which means that a sub n is within epsilon of b. So a sub n and b are less than epsilon away. All right, thus a converges to its infimum little b. And there we go.